Okay, this evening I am looking at my Synology DS211J server, which is this one on the left. And uh, that's something I've had here for uh, a couple of years. And uh, it worked great until a uh, nearby lightning strike uh, got into my uh, Ethernet cables and uh, fried the, uh, the network port on it. Uh, the disks inside seem to spool up, the unit powers up. Um, it boots up. I get no error messages or anything like that, and uh, but then I just can't access the uh, the data. Um, I did take the unit apart once and looked at the main board and saw that the uh, the Ethernet controller chip on it was uh, well pretty much missing. It had been uh, burned away from the uh, from the lightning strike. I had contacted Synology to see if I could figure out what the chip was, um, but they uh, they wouldn't give me. So what I've done is I've purchased a new Synology uh, DS213J, which is the current equivalent uh, to the 211J, which uh, is now three or four years old. Uh, so what I'm going to attempt to do is uh, just basically take my drives out of this unit and put them in this one, and uh, hopefully everything will work. Um, I think the uh, the normal procedure would be to do uh, to power this up and uh, back up the uh, disk station disk station manager uh, settings first um, but of course I'm not able to do that because I can't access the drives um, through the network and that's really the only way to uh, to access the thing so um, I guess uh, I contacted Synology and they seem to think I should be able to just migrate the drives over and uh, everything should work so I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. What I'm going to do first is uh, power this unit up and put it on the network without the drives in it and uh, see if I can uh, access the, uh, the console and set everything up. Okay, so you can see here I'm just using this uh, silly, silly little netbook here. This is the only uh, computer I have down here in the cellar right now. And uh, you can see that I've got the uh, the new 213J connected uh, on the network, and uh, I'm able to uh, uh, get through the uh, the web application here. Um, it, but uh, as you can see, it, there's no uh, hard drive uh, installed, so I'm getting this uh, this message. Okay, so in order to uh, get this unit apart. There are two screws on the back, which I've already removed, and then uh, the uh, the fat side of the unit um, slides out. In fact, on the bottom, you can see there's an open and a close, and it's kind of a detent here. And uh, you just kind of slide this forward, and then it should. Uh, the cover should just lift right up and out. I can set that aside. And then there's the uh, the drive bay with the drives in it. You can see there. And uh, those are just held on with a couple of screws uh, on either side. So I've already removed the screws from the top drive, and I'll remove the two or the four screws from the bottom and uh, swap those over to uh, the new. Okay, so I've got the, uh, the new unit here, and uh, this opens up just like the, uh, the other unit, whoops, and uh, the cover, you can set that aside. Alright, I just decided to put the two units side by side here just for fun, and uh, some of the major differences you can see on the old unit over here on the right, the, uh, the fan is a lot smaller, and uh, also the... Uh, the small back plane for the uh, the drive connectors is a little bit different. It's uh, it's got this wider section here uh, that connects into this connector, um, but uh, on this one you can see it's only uh, a little it's narrower for some reason. And uh, not sure if the back plane is or the uh, the motherboard is the same or not. Uh, I'm not going to uh, take it apart to that level and. Uh, and look at it at this point. I think I'm just going to put the drives in and uh, see what happens. So when I took the drive, okay. So um, according to the Synology site, 
it's important to keep track of the drives and uh, put them in the same positions that they came out in. So uh, this drive and my old unit was on the bottom. So this should uh, just slide right in and uh, uh, mate to that connector, uh, which it has. And then uh, we'll just uh, install the four screws, uh, which on this unit there's some nice uh, rubber grommets here. And uh, I guess I'll just uh, slip this other drive in while I'm here. Get that all positioned. And then uh, screw everything down. Okay, one other minor difference between the two units is the, uh, the supplied screws to uh, mount the drives to the frame are also uh, shoulder screws as opposed to the old ones which were just regular screws. I'm not sure how well that's visible or can focus but you can see uh, you can see there's uh, just a, a small area of the, sh of the screw that's threaded and the rest is uh, unthreaded and uh, that should probably help with uh, vibration and would also prevent uh, driving the screw too far into uh, the drive body. Um, in fact, for comparison, here's the old screw, which is uh, still a fairly nice, good quality screw, but it's threaded all the way down. Okay, so the drives are all mounted in, and uh, had a couple extra screws, which is uh, kind of nice. Uh, it's good to have extra instead of shorted. So I'll just slide the cover back into position here. And get that all mounted. And then uh, in the box there were two or three smaller screws um, that I believe um, go here and here to mount the uh, cover to the chassis. Um, so I'll just install those and then uh, go put this on the shelf and uh, see what happens. Okay, so I've got the uh, the unit connected over here uh, with my uh, cable modem and my router. Uh, my router also happens to have uh, four standard Ethernet ports on the back, so um, I brought it over here to connect everything. You can see the Ethernet line here is hooked up, and I got the power kind of temporarily routed here, um, and uh, eventually I'll have to modify this shelf. Um, so that I can kind of neaten everything up and uh, this this wire here is for another project that I'm working on um, but anyway uh, now is the moment of truth we'll uh, find the power button here and see if everything powers up properly okay and I can barely tell that the the unit is even running the fan is very quiet Okay, so there's, uh, as you can see, there's some drive activity going on there. Not sure what that's all about. Uh, but the blue light's on solid, and uh, we've got a blinking status light. Okay, so here's the status page, and I've got some of the, uh, the particulars covered up here. Um, but uh, you can see that the status says migratable. And uh, over here on the right, there is an arrow to click to uh, presumably move on to the next step. So that is what I shall do now. Okay, on the next screen uh, we have the choice between migration and clean installation. And I'm going to choose migration as that seems to be uh, a safer thing and also seems to be what uh, what it is I want to do, I want to keep my files and most of the settings I had, um, although I'm not real worried about the settings, I guess, but uh, but um, it seems like that's going to uh, keep more of the data intact, and, and that's what I'm going to do, so I'll hit next on that. So now it, it is asking if I want to download and install the latest DSM, uh, which I will allow it to do. And now it's time to create a password, so I will go ahead and do that and move on to the next step. 
Okay, so I've uh, entered an admin password and now things seem to be happening. Applying network settings. And well, that was a big jump. So hopefully this thing is going to go pretty quick. Because as you can see down there in the right hand corner, it's getting a little on the late side. Okay, the thing seemed to be working in, in the middle of something, and then I heard the uh, disk station beep from across the cellar here, and now it's uh, come up with this login screen. So I am going to uh, log in and see what happened. Okay, so I'm into the, uh, the storage manager here, and it uh, looks like a good sign. And I can see that uh, the, uh, the usage of my disk station is about uh, 100 gigs. Um, I'm sorry, 900 gigs, which is about what I think it should be. And uh, you can see here that it's a RAID 1 volume. Uh, with an ext3 file system which is what uh, what what it was supposed to be and what it was in the past so uh, hopefully that means everything is migrated over um, so I'm going to continue to uh, poke through here and uh, see if I can um, export this thing on the network and access my files like I used to be able to. okay so it looks like uh, everything's working I didn't really even have to do anything all of my uh, settings and everything imported right over and uh, we're looking at a picture of my uh, truck in uh, last year's uh, blizzard I think we had, I don't know, two feet of snow or something like that, maybe a little more uh, but at any rate that picture came right off the server so, uh, so that's great everything seems to be up and running and uh, doing what it's supposed to be doing